Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in a USL Championship. We have a championship championship ready to be determined. And it is going to be in Charleston, South Carolina. And we will uh, find out who's going to be the champion. Is it going to be the Charleston Battery or is it going to be the sixth seed out of the West and Phoenix Rising? We will get into uh, all of that coming up in just a little bit. But before we get you into all of the news you need to know in the league, we've got to go backward. And How did we get to this particular moment in time? Starting off in the east, it was Lou City visiting Patriots Point to take on the Charleston Battery. Here's your highlights in the Eastern Conference Final, brought to us by our friends at ESPN+, Plus, the USL Championship, and YouTube. Do you own a gun and live in Georgia? Then listen up, because this impacts you. See, many states have now adopted laws to... The whistle blows. Let's light this candle. It's the 2023 USL Championship Eastern Conference Final. Charleston Battery and Louisville City FC. Third time they've met in the postseason. Miguel tries to funnel forward. Here's a sprinting run. Markanik splitting. Ownby commits the foul. And our first booking of the night is shown to Brian Ownby. He's the lone man on top of it. Five men in the wall. Arturo Rodriguez gets it over the top. It's magnificent from Rodriguez. And a flawless start for Charleston at home in the Eastern Conference Final. A free kick goal from Rodriguez. 1-0 the lead for the battery. What would be the key component in separation between the two? Restarts, dead balls, a massive mistake, or a moment of brilliance. Three out of four is not bad. Arturo Rodriguez with his wand just up over the top. It's got a perfect amount of pace. Enough precision to bend it back across. Danik touches it. Rodriguez in a foot race against Tosh. Tosh knocks him down and it's a free kick again for Charleston. Notice how Arturo Rodriguez on the diagonal. Yes, there's a foul that comes out of it. He's moving away from the center spot, but he's dragging Sean Tosh in that back line with him. He steps on it and pulls it back. Plenty of space. Hard hit ball, bounced by Traeger. Williams a second chance. Just goes above the bar. You know, the emotion was an interesting conversation for both of these coaches and how to harness it. And you know, some guys take it, take full advantage. Rodriguez. First ball won by Ikaza. Nobody over there. Augie Williams will get to the second baseball. Allen circles. Allen. For Lou City. Back inside of that 18. There's plenty of space on this right-hand side. Rodriguez again into the box. Headed this time off the crossbar. Second chance. Allen blocked away. Third opportunity. Lou City dodges a bullet. Cycled movement by the Charleston Battery. And what you need to make sure of if you're Arturo Rodriguez to get this in quickly, and he does. Derek Dotson after the redirect. They get caught ball watching here. A tiny touch. Everybody feels like this is just going to continue to bounce around. Can Lou City take advantage? Ownby in space. Lancaster to his left. Ownby slips. Ownby shoots! Wide. Promising counter from Lou City. End to end play. And you forget about the fact that you've got to immediately spring the other direction. This is what we talked about coming in the front three. Whether it's Ownby, Lancaster, or Gonzalez, once the turnover happens, Five minutes plus any stoppage time to go in the first half of the Eastern Conference Final. As Louisville come on the road and pull out an equalizer here. Late in this first half. Don't peek a low. Sharpie. Excellent pass here at Mogel. Shooting. Easily covered by Muse. It was right at him the entire way. Lancaster gave it a go though. Segbers gallops along the sideline. Segbers, Alex for Markanic. Penalty! Charleston a chance to add to the lead. A decisive choice made by Elvis Osmanovic. I actually thought they got the ball from the angle that we had. And really the first time that we've seen Mark Segbers this high up in an advanced position. Notice how he calms things down to allow this run to develop. He does get the ball. Top goal scorers in the league this season. 
Can he make it two? Augie Williams smiles. Augie Williams strikes. Augie Williams stings the strings. Charleston two, loose City nil. Looks like he gets the ball the other side. Contact first, doesn't matter anymore. 12 yards out and almost automatic for Augie Williams. Only nine touches heading into the dressing room. Eliminated from contention in the opening 45 minutes. In the League One history books. Own beat. Near side. Gonzalez. High arcing ball over everybody though. There's an extra man over there. Second ball in. This one. Headed. Mews though. Grabs it. Lancaster giving it a change. There are a couple of subs coming on the sideline though. The immediately concern that's going to go on here is to the far side of the field and what would be some cramping for Rodriguez does well, Markanik. Williams was offside, so that doesn't allow for the outlet. And then Winder, it is Rodriguez. Wow. Called for the foul. That's incredible work by Arturo Rodriguez <laughs> to get around him. And but all they could need is one here in half number two to get that spark back. Allen being held up. This will be a booking without a doubt. Miguel going in the book. Avila gets around, takes a tumble, foul is whistled, booking as well. It was initially the yellow card, and it indeed will be a second yellow to Mogel. How good is this on the sideline, though, to just advance this thing forward on the diagonal and the run from Avila. Watch the touch right back into the path of Mogel. Can do nothing on the trailing run from Carlos Mogel, except watch this player impede your path and high IQ. Twenty-one, they were on the receiving end of a comeback from the Tampa Bay Rowdies with inside ten minutes to go that saw them get even. Push that one into extra time. Anything is possible. At the death of a match, one would imagine most money would be put on a team like Louisville City. Oscar Jimenez puts it in. That hits the post and it goes in. Lou City has a heartbeat in the 90th minute after just missing it off the left post. Kyle Adams scores on a header and Lou City is not done yet. San Diego in a trade that really benefited Louisville City. To get to a three, to get to a four, his height, his versatility, and the aerial prowess that can be, albeit on a redirect. Perez goes down. Allen is going to be booked. Uh, uh, Williams was in an offside slot. There's the full time whistle. Charleston continues its magical run. Eastern Conference champions and back to the title match for the first time since 2012. The Battery beat Lou City 2-1. And after the win at home at Patriots Point, the Battery caught up with Ben Pierman, Leland Archer, and Augie Williams. You know, you see them, they're celebrating. It's it's incredible moment for the club, incredible moment for this community. Um, you know, our focus was just to be the best version of ourselves. And I, I told the team on February 1st, if we're the best version of ourselves, we don't need to talk about playoffs or trophies or these types of things. You'll be very satisfied with the season. And uh, we talked about our attitude and our effort every single day. And they brought it every single day. And this is the outcome. I'm, I'm just so proud of them. Still compartmentalizing it. Like I said, you, you play to win. You play to win trophies. Um, those, those young men did it. There's there, nobody else. Those young men. We have a great ownership group. Great president, great coaching staff, great great backroom staff. Um, but those players worked their socks off. So proud of them. They, they earned that tonight. We were very good. It was different. It was different. We scored early. We were on top of them. That crowd deserves that. You know, our, our young men fought and deserved the victory, but that was, that was for the fans. That was incredible. It's been a tough, long year. Um, if you asked me, we'd be here at the beginning. Yeah, I don't think 
any of us would have said that. I don't think anybody expected us to be here, but we defied the odds and we're here. Won, won the Eastern Conference. All season long, the guys have been locked in. They've been selfless. Coach preaches that every day in practice to be selfless, to work hard for one another. And it's paid off these, these last couple of games. It's a great feeling, obviously. We all love winning. Um, but from last year to this year, I think it's been, it's been incredible. I think the journey has been, been amazing. I'm enjoying I'm kind of speechless. It was electric tonight. I think the last couple of games, the sellout crowd have been behind us every step of the way. And we definitely feel that on the field every game. Uh, I can't even start to explain. I'm exhausted. You know, it's a joyful moment for all of us. You know, we've worked so extremely hard for this. And, you know, just to see you today, it's an amazing feeling. And we're all happy. When it comes to the playoff, it's about who wanted more. And, you know, we've shown it every game that we wanted more than everyone. And then you see, you see it today. And then, obviously, we didn't give up. Even though they scored, we kept going. And, you know, that's, that's the most important thing. We call them the 12th man for a reason. They've always backed us from the beginning. Even from last year, the guys that were here, we can see, you know, so for them to support us this year all the way through, it's been very, very massive for us. And you can see, as long as these guys are behind us, we're going to give them everything that we got. So that means one down, one to go. Out west, the sixth seed has been storming through the state of California. Phoenix Rising knocked San Diego Loyal out in the 3-6, knocked out Orange County SC in the 2-6. So that meant it was a 1-6. They had to travel to Sacramento to try to get into the USL Championship Championship. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at uh, ESPN Plus, the USL Championship, and YouTube. The referee getting the go-ahead. The whistle goes, and off we go in the Western Conference Final in the Californian capital of Sacramento. What a road it's been for Phoenix, though. Talk about a resilient club. We saw that with Sacramento in the U.S. Open Cup a year ago. But here in the USL Championship playoffs in 2023, it has been all Phoenix rising. And that's going to be it. And so it looks like Trejo now a second collision with a Republic player and an early yellow card for the three defensive. And it, it's the right call. Anytime you go lead with that arm, Phoenix or Sacramento can start moving that ball around, play at their strengths. And this game uh, could really open up. Nick Ross spinning to Cicerone. Stay with the Cicerone! Russell Cicerone, wonderfully done. You just spoke about Sacramento doing what they're capable of doing. It's a quick few passes, lovely interchange. Nick Ross finds Russell Cicerone, who has a lot to do. And through the legs of Stenberg and Rios Novo might be disappointed that he didn't get enough of that, didn't really push off his legs. There wasn't too much power on it from Cicerone. He's a trickster at the heart as well, and he's got the game's first goal. What will Phoenix do to try to answer Harvey? Coming down like a freight train, trying to find Danny Trejo. And now Sacramento looking up pitch. Cutting through, Kecko's able to go by. Scott Felipe to his left. He's got Cicerone way out wide. He might cross his ball in, it does. Here's a chance for Kecko, and it's cleared. Follow up, and it's into the arms of Rios Novo. A thunderous strike, an opportunity from Jack Gurr. Nice takeaway, Arnold Lopez. And Harvey coming in, making the right play against Felipe. Armenicus, this is where Phoenix can be quite dangerous in transition. Armenicus trying to find a teammate. No, go for goal himself. Nice stop by Danny Vidiello. Good left foot he has. He's trying to guide that ball into the far corner. And a little look at the Fuen Mayor four on the face eyes. Match up to keep your eye on Adam off and Nick Ross. How about Nick Ross? Oh my, here he goes again. 19 cutting inside. 19 cut down. And a foul is given to the Republic here. And it goes against Darnell King and the Phoenix Rising. William Lahore will collect another former Roots defender. Formella trying to turn. Formella just missing wide. Another corner kick for the Rising. Ball driven well, selling out Sacramento. Here comes Roro, and he is fouled by Monjoma. And Monjoma will be booked as Roro stays on the turf. Now 
mind you both have been dealing with injuries of course Rodrigo Lopez dealing with that thigh injury that put him out and that's a collection of fouls for a yellow for Keko. So Rodrigo Lopez out for most of the entire season gets hurt here against Detroit makes his comeback I'm quite sure. Yeah, I'm not really quite sure where that was. Okay. The old token goalkeeper uh, <laughs> free kick. All right. Find the goal in the same possession. Here's Pirano. Stenberg's getting in the action, leaving a bit vulnerable in the back, and a foul is given. And Stenberg and company, and this is where it can get dangerous. We talk a lot about trades and whatnot coming in, but I'll tell you what, Stenberg coming back to the club, maybe one of the better additions. And here's Erickson Gallardo. He'll come in for Dark for Mellon. Once again, it's a set piece and a dangerous spot for Phoenix Rising. They really need to get someone on the end of these. Way show will pull off. Gallardo, oh, it's saved by Danny Vidiello. The follow up is there, and Phoenix have tied. I'm not quite sure if it was saved the first time, may have taken a bounce in. And it might have been Connor Donovan was the one who's fallen in. Danny Vitello gets his left hand to the ball. And I think it does come off the feet of Connor Donovan. That is unfortunate. And Rodrigo Lopez looking for a counter. He'll find Archimed. Luther being tripped up, stays with it. And here comes a booking. And Stenberg, Treore. Nick Ross has, has played a lot of minutes. Matt Legrass is in there. Those guys are responsible for getting that second. Harvey being able to get to it. And now Phoenix will start to press a little bit. Rossifani Quesho. Quesho may go for goal. It's in. Again, Phoenix able to pounce. And they score two goals late in this game. One on an own goal. Another coming. On a turnover. That has taken this Phoenix Rising side to the USL Championship Final. And Quesho now put on the show himself as he's gone over to the crowd and started taunting. The crowd is now throwing stuff on the field. And one of the Phoenix players has been hit. What a strike for the Rising. And they go up two to one here. And this has become a bit out of control to say the least. Looking for Archimed. Christian Pirano is taken down. And a yellow card comes out. Play will stop. And Stenberg will try to draw a foul. Carlos Harvey. Comes away with it. A diving Connor Donovan trying to equalize. Now they'll try to waste as much time as possible. And Phoenix Rising are headed back to the USL Championship Cup finale. After the Phoenix win, the Rising, their own selves, caught up with head coach Juan Guerra in Sacramento. Juan, just, if you can, put it into words what it feels like right now. I can't. I can't. I... I'm so proud of this organization. I'm so proud of of our players. At the end of the day, this is this is because of them. We're celebrating tonight because of them. We're celebrating tonight because of all the effort that they put in. We're celebrating tonight because they've been challenged, they've been demanded, they've been pushed. 
they've been criti criticized and they keep pushing forward man there's a there's a group of players that that truly believe and believes in what we're building and tonight they deserve it the players their families and our supporters that that have been very very patient they all deserve it tonight so i'm very very happy for all of them you look at the first half in there yes you go the goal down but what were your overall thoughts on that that it looked like a final it looked like a final where they didn't have a lot of shots on target. I think they only had that one. And I think we only had one, too. It was, we were still controlling the game through possession as, as we want to, but they were very dangerous on the break. Um, they, building out of the back, we played that ball in in a transition moment, it ends on a goal. But listen, the, the resiliency of this group is, you can't measure it. And the guys kept pushing forward, kept playing our way with our identity. Uh, and listen, in the second half, I think we controlled the game how we wanted to. At times, Sacramento was, was dangerous as well on the break. Uh, they were pressing us. And like what I've been saying now for months, we have a group of 20 starters. Everyone that it's part of that roster, it's important. Everybody plays a, 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 a key role in everything we do. The guys that are starting, the guys that are not starters, the guys that are not dressing, the guys that didn't travel. Everybody plays a key role in what, to what we're doing. And look what happened today, man. We, we make substitutions and we have the ability to get better again. Not just get better, but we, we look with what, more energy, more stronger. And the guys that get subbed are, are clapping and jumping and motivating the guys that go in. We're a big family since day one. This is what we wanted to achieve. And I can tell you today that, that we have achieved that. As you uh, obviously get on the scoreboard yourselves with... You know, about 10 minutes to play there plus stoppage time. What do you think you saw as a change in your own team after that point? Well, it's just how hungry the, the team is. And, and they were feeling it. They were feeling that they could control the game. And then we just needed to be a bit more on the front foot and, and take a bit more risks on that final third. Then the, the group that started, listen, worked so hard. There's a group that has started now for three weeks in a row, playing a lot of minutes. And, and, I, and I saw today that the legs were a little bit tired. And the group that hasn't played that many minutes was ready to come in. It's very, very hungry. And it's, it's so funny, man, because at half and, and, and before the game, and I think I told you this too. I said, we want a set-piece goal. We want to score a goal out of, out of a set-piece. And the set-piece goal comes in the final. So, again, the belief of this group, how, how important everybody is for all of us, because I truly, truly mean this. And it's not just me saying it or the staff is them believing and them feeling important. I think that's what has been key for us. So that's your final, and that is how it is going to be laid out for you as we determine a champion broadcast on the ESPN family of networks. Getting into all league teams, awards finalists, all of that kind of information. Let's run through that pretty quickly here. The awards finalists, five categories – and the award winners will be announced starting on Sunday through Thursday. Championship Awards finalists for Goalkeeper of the Year, it's Paul Blanchett, Nathan Steinwasher, and Danny Vitiello. Defender of the Year, it is Connor Donovan from Sacramento, Jack Gurr from Sacramento Republic, Arturo Ordonez from Pittsburgh. Coach of the Year finalists, Mark Briggs in Sacramento, Bob Lilly in Pittsburgh, Ben Pierman in Charleston, no surprise there. Young Player of the Year finalists, Fidel Barajas in Charleston. Rocco Rios Novo for Phoenix Rising, getting them to a title game in Rita Zuhir in San Antonio. Player of the Year finalists. It is Russell Ciceroni in Sacramento, Albert Dequa in Pittsburgh, Cal Jennings in Tampa, Danny Trejo in Phoenix. All of those awards will be rolled out in uh, sequential day by day, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 of November. And it will be. Interesting to see who wins these awards. I know that our friends at the USL show are going to have some issues with those finalists as we go. Kickoff scheduled for 7 o'clock Sunday night. Game set to air on ESPN2, ESPN Deportes, and on Sirius XM. FC, the awards were voted on by team management and a league-wide media panel. Included representation from every USL market. Obviously, the big news coming out of USL is the landmark multi-year rights agreement between USL and CBS Sports from now through the 2027 seasons of USL Championship and USL League One. Throughout the deal, CBS Sports is going to broadcast select USL matches, including the USL Championship Final on Big CBS, 
The first time USL competition will be featured on network television in league history. Simulcast live on Paramount+. Plus. CBS Sports also televising more than 20 USL matches on CBS Sports Network, 75 on CBS Sports Golasso, the streaming network available on multiple platforms, including Paramount+. Plus. You'll have all of the coverage available from Golasso, CBS Sports app, on Morning Footy, Box to Box, and Scoreline, Golasso starting 11 news, uh, newsletter, editorial coverage on CBSSports.com as well, and CBS Sports Golasso. USL retained Octagon to manage the negotiations for this particular agreement that adds uh, the USL to the extensive portfolio that the Paramount family of networks have when it comes to the sport of soccer. All league teams for the USL championship, all league first team, Danny Vitiello and Net from Sacramento, back line of three, Connor Donovan, Jack Gurr, and Arturo Ordonez. In your midfield four, Taylor Davila from RGV, Charlie Dennis from Tampa, San Antonio's Jorge Hernandez and Aaron Malloy from Memphis 901, Albert Dequa, Cal Jennings, and Danny Trejo. Finish out your first team, first selections. Second team in net, Paul Blanchett from Oakland. Adrian Dispay from Indy 11 is a back line of three to go with Mitchell Tainer from San Antonio, Sean Tosh from Lou City. Midfield four, Enzo Martinez from Birmingham Legion, Cam Lindley from Indy 11, Conardo Forbes from Pittsburgh, Fidel Barajas, no surprise, from Charleston. Forwards up top, Sacramento's Russell Ciceroni, Milan Olaski from Orange County, and Tani Oluwasei from San Antonio FC. So those are your, your first and second teams this year in USL Championship. Interesting signing by El Paso Locomotive. They signed New Mexico United's Amando Moreno for the 2024 season. Ten goals, five assists, and 23 in New Mexico. So he goes from the lab to Southwest University Park. Sure to set off some alarm bells if it already hasn't. 83 total matches, and Moreno has 24 goals and 11 assists, competing for El Salvador and their national team. But that's some serious alarm bells going off when a guy goes from one team to another. Connor McGlynn makes a move to Rhode Island FC to join Coke Vegas as the first two players that have been signed by RIFC. Rowdies have announced their initial roster moves for the 2024 uh, upcoming USL Championship season. Nikki Law is going to transition to an assistant coaching role with the club in the new campaign. An announcement regarding the club's new head coach will be made this week. Returnees, Dennis Jennings, Leo Fernandez, Aaron Guillen, Forrest Lasso, Connor Antley, Lewis Hilton, Jordan Darty. Ra- yeah, the Rowdies remain in conversation with more players, including Connor Sparrow and Jan Akra. And uh, players out of contract, Jake Arman, Rico Rosarina, Abel Caputo, Jan Akra, Ariel Martinez, and Connor Sparrow, the loan of Jake LaCava comes to an end, and the conversations, as we say, are continuing with Ekra. And Sparrow, five players confirmed to, to depart so far. News regarding players with contract options will be announced in short order. Orange County has pulled the interim tag off of Morton Carlson, making him the head coach with immediate effect to a multi-year deal. So that will be uh, very, very uh, interesting. The continuity will continue for Orange County as they were the two seed in the West in 2023. Hartford Athletic brings aboard Brazilian goalkeeper Renan Ribeiro. And uh, he's 33-year-olds competed in the top flight in Brazil, Portugal, and most recently played in the Saudi Pro League, all six foot four of him. And uh, he was in Liga Portugal with Estoril and Sporting CP before moving to Alaclia, the Saudi Pro League, in 2022. Two seasons with Sporting CP, leading them to a Tasha de Portugal victory in 2019. 38 appearances, 91 saves, 6 shutouts, 24-6-7. and seven. Eight appearances with Sporting in Europa League play. So the 33-year-old would be now signed on to Hartford Athletic for the 2024 season. Once again, social media, the 280-character app on Facebook and on Instagram. Be a part of that conversation. Sign up for all of that, and you get to know what's going on in USL Championship all season long. Don't forget to go to uslchampionship.com. Be a part of the fan zone. Have conversations and, and interact with fans just like you with your favorite side and with your favorite teams and your favorite uh, rivals in USL Championship. One other final note, seven players from the USL Championship in League One have been called up by Jamaica, four of them actually playing in Colorado Springs with the switchbacks. 
Speedy Williams, Tyreek McGee, Romario Williams, and Deshane Beckford. Jamali Waite from his time with Pittsburgh Riverhounds returns to the Reggae Boys squad. 42 saves, 10 and uh, and uh, 10 wins in the regular season and playoffs. Five appearances for Jamaica previously. Trayvon Reed hopes to make his senior national team debut after all of the time he has spent with Oakland Roots. And Amal Knight returns to the Jamaica squad after completing Lexus season, inaugural season, 79 saves, four shutouts, 24 appearances going forward. So Jamali Waite, 42 saves, 10 shutouts. And Amal Knight, 79 saves and four shutouts in the regular season in League One. So the keeping is going to be stout for the Reggae Boys coming up for quite some time. When we know more news, we'll let you know what else is going on. But uh, in USL Championship, the championship championship coming up just around the corner, and we'll talk about it right here on SDH. For everybody here at SDH, thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to keep covering the coverage of the championship championship in the USL Championship. We'll have your highlights and all your posts next week as we wrap up another season in USLC. For everybody here at uh, SDH, I'm just John. Thanks for hanging out with us as we cover the USL Championship. Enjoy the game. 